Welcome back to our Famous in America channel. In today's video we are going to remember the life of an important molecular biologist, a dancer, and other fantastic personalities who have unfortunately left us in recent days. But before starting this journey of great tributes, we would be deeply happy if you could like and enjoy this video, as this helps us a lot to continue sharing these simple tributes with all of you. Let's meet our honorees today. Number 1, John Yerbury. Australian molecular biologist Justin John Yerbury died on July 28, 2023, aged 49. Yerbury was spurred to pursue a career in biological research when he discovered that his family had the genetic form of motor neurone disease, MND. He held the position of professor of neurodegenerative diseases at the University of Wollongong. He himself was diagnosed with MND in 2016, but continued to research until his death from the disease. Yerbury devoted his life to researching possible effective treatments for MND. His research interests included protein misfolding, aggregation and neurodegenerative diseases, protein aggregation and neuroinflammation and propagation of protein misfolding, protein homeostasis, and motor neuron disease. His team studied single protein molecules to grow cells. He always shared his research not only with the academic community, but also with those with MND and their families. Yerbury has had 55 research papers listed in PubMed and over 100 in Google Scholar, in addition to many conferences and other presentations. Interestingly, in April 2017, Yerbury met world-famous physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking, who had MND for over 50 years until his death in 2018. They discussed living with the disease as well as Yerbury's research. Yerbury is survived by wife Rachel Yerbury and two daughters. Number 2, Beetle Bob. Beetle Bob, whose real name was Robert E. Matonis, tragically, Beetle Bob passed away on July 27, 2023, aged 69, after a long battle with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS), otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Bob was a prominent figure in the St. Louis music scene, Louis, Missouri. Born December 1, 1953, he distinguished himself as an American dancer with a unique style. His dance moves were notoriously arrhythmic, complemented by his Beatles-inspired, mop-top hairstyle and impeccably cut suits reminiscent of the 1960s with artists such as Ani DeFranco, The Flaming Lips, Whiskey Town, Less Than Jake and Chuck Berry. He was often seen in the crowd and even on stage, dancing alongside the performers. His unwavering dedication to attending live shows was extraordinary. On Christmas Eve 1996, Beetle Bob attended at least one concert every night, amassing an impressive tally of over 10,000 bands he had seen. While some viewers warmly embraced her constant presence and unique dance moves, others found it a bit off-putting. However, Beetle Bob left an indelible mark on the music community, becoming an iconic and beloved figure in the St. Louis music scene. Lewis. Lewis. His legacy as a passionate and enthusiastic supporter of live music will undoubtedly live on. Number 3, George Wilson. American professional basketball player George Wilson died on July 29, 2023 at the age of 81. In the 1964 NBA draft, Wilson was chosen by the Cincinnati Royals as their territorial selection. He embarked on a seven-season NBA journey, playing for various teams during his career. He started with the Royals, then moved on to the Chicago Bulls, and later joined the Seattle Supersonics, acquired via the 1967 NBA expansion draft. Subsequently, he played for the Phoenix Suns, acquired via the 1968 NBA expansion draft, the Philadelphia 76ers, and finally, the Buffalo Braves, acquired via an expansion draft before the 1970-71 season. Throughout his time in the NBA, Wilson maintained a steady performance, 
averaging 5.4 points per game and 5.2 rebounds per game. His contribution to the sport and his versatility on the court made him a valuable asset to the teams he played for during his career. Wilson was a member of the U.S. Olympic basketball team that went undefeated and won the gold medal in the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Number 4. Thomas Goltz An American author and journalist Thomas Goltz died on July 29, 2023, at age 68. Goltz was known for his accounts of conflict in the Caucasus region during the 1990s. He was born in Japan, raised in North Dakota, and earned a master's degree in Middle Eastern Studies from New York University. He spent over 30 years working in Turkey, the Caucasus region of the former Soviet Union, and its surrounding areas. During this time, he became renowned as a crisis correspondent for his coverage of the conflicts between Azerbaijan and Armenia over Karabakh, the war of separation in Abkhazia from Georgia, and the separatist conflict in Chechnya. In 1996, his documentary for the Global Visions Rights and Wrongs program was a finalist for the Rory Peck Award for Excellence in Television Journalism. Goltz was proficient in German, Turkish, Arabic, Azerbaijani, and Russian. He divided his time, spending half the year in the field and the other half in Montana, where he taught part-time at the University of Montana in Missoula and Montana State University in Bozeman. One of his works, Azerbaijan Diary, recounts the country's post-Soviet era, including the Karabakh War and Haydar Aliyev's rise to the presidency. Goltz is also known for authoring Chechnya Diary, a story of the 1995 massacre in Samashki, Georgia Diary, and more recently, Assassinating Shakespeare, The True Confessions of a Bard in the Bush, which documents his early travels through Africa while interpreting Shakespeare's plays. His latest known publications in 2021 were Turkai and Oil Odyssey. Turkai is a collection of essays and analyses about his long-standing relationship with the country, and Oil Odyssey is a humorous account of his planned, yet dysfunctional and comically executed moto political journey in the year 2000 to transport the symbolic first barrel of oil from Baku, Azerbaijan, on the western coast of the Caspian Sea to Sehan on the eastern Mediterranean coast of Turkey. Number 5. Francois J. Castaigne French automotive executive Francois J. Castaigne died on July 26, 2023, aged 78. Castaigne worked for Renault, American Motors, and Chrysler. He had an engineering degree from the École Nationale Supérieure d'Arts et Métiers in Paris and worked in Europe for Gordini and Renault before being named Vice President of Engineering and Product Development at American Motors Corporation, AMC. Castaigne's journey in motorsports commenced in 1968 when he joined Gordini, where he focused on working with engines for the 24 hours of Le Mans races. As time went on, Gordini was acquired by Renault, leading to Castaigne's promotion to the esteemed role of Renault Sport Technical Director. During his tenure with Renault, he achieved a remarkable track record, serving as a crucial member of the racing engine development team and later assuming the position of director for racing programs. Subsequently, Casting transitioned to AMC, American Motors Corporation, from Renault, as Renault held a significant 46% ownership stake in the company. As part of this move, he and his family relocated to Detroit, Michigan, in the year 1980. Castaigne's expertise and experience in the motorsports world continued to make a significant impact as he ventured into new territories with AMC in the United States. Castaigne was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame on October 12, 2010 in Dearborn, Michigan. Interestingly, Castaigne was also a member of Team Dodge Viper, being the Vice President of Engineering, and his presence was vital to the development of the Viper's V10 engine. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we loved creating it. And if you like what you see, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more cool content. Also, 
Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. We appreciate all your support and feedback, they mean the world to us. Stay tuned for the next video, and until then, take care and keep spreading positivity. See you next time.